In this tutorial, I will show you how to add parts to scrap mechanic and even make some simple interactives. I highly recommend you watch my previous tutorial so you know how to navigate the mod tool. Right, um, let's start again by making a new mod. So again, we click in the top left, file, new mod, blocks and parts, we're just adding parts. Yeah, I know my names are brilliant. So again, we have an empty template. So we want to head to the top left again and take a look at our shape set again, which is linked up by our shape uh, database. So we're just going to select this item, which opens up this window over here, which says shape set and now we can simply right click it and click add part list and just like this we've added a new part now to make this actually work we have to generate a new UUID just right click on UUID as usual now unlike a block we actually need to render something and this is why we have this renderable now for simplicity I'm just gonna go on steam click manage browse local files again which is uh, where our scrap mechanic folder is located copy the path and now we am looking for a renderable file that's already in the game we can find some in survival or data. Then we head to objects, renderable. And I think I'm actually going to open the robot part. And it doesn't really matter which one I mean, uh, which one I chose. But a red tape bot head to dot rend. That sounds interesting. Now I'm just going to click open. And what you'll see is we um, got the head of a tape bot now as a part. Well, and you think we might be done now, but you're actually wrong. We need to select our item in the part list, which currently is just called null. Then we right click on it. We click add and we need to add some kind of collision to it. Now the easiest kind of collision is just simply a box. Now this is gonna have a one by one by one collision which I think the model is much bigger than that but I'm just gonna save it and we'll see if it actually loads up in game. All right moment of truth I go to mod parts and yeah I'm a genius and yeah as I showed you um, this is now gonna have a one by one collision which does not ex actually fit the model but yeah now we could build our own tape bot if we want to like you know they had all of the other parts and I think I should also be able to paint it yes. Let's take a closer look at some of the properties of a part. Again, the UUID is just its own unique ID. The renderable is what actually displays our model. Now, the physics material is just for some like basic effects if I um, smash my hammer at it and stuff. Now, what's different compared to box is that we actually have to worry about a rotation set now. Currently, this is set to default. Now, I'm gonna change it to prop Y, which is gonna mean we are only gonna be able to rotate it around the Y axis. And if I'll just save these changes, now I smack it with my hammer. Okay, it sounds a little bit more squishy I think and there's potato particles but more interestingly if I now rotate the object you see um these are all the rotations I can possibly have you know this makes a lot of sense for parts like um a button you don't want to rotate it like like this if you imagine there won't be any glass blocks because this would just be really dumb next we have a color property that we can add of course and this is gonna be the default color of our um head I'm gonna turn this all the way to blue which fits the tape bot <laughs> although actually this is a red tape bot so let's make it red now there's also a cylinder property property and okay I don't think we can have a cylinder uh, collision and a box at the same time so yeah with a cylinder we can give this a cylinder collision instead of just a cube which doesn't really make much sense for a tape bot head but you'll see right so if I now place the part it's actually gonna be colored red and if I now um, drop the part uh, you can see um the head keeps rolling because now it uh, is basically a cylinder so if you wanted to make your own wheels um like if I actually you know we could make this to into, into a wheel now if we increase the diameter to two. Okay, I think there should be three because then it's symmetrical. Let's save it again and yeah, let's put these on a car. Yeah, you see, this is why we want the right rotation set because this is not the right part of the wheel. But I just changed it so now this is gonna have a diameter of three blocks. So yeah, you can see this really good with the switch. Now, this is gonna be the collision but of course it's gonna be rounded like a wheel. So yeah, this will actually drive. Yep, and as you can see this, this looks like any regular wheel. Um, okay, maybe it's a bit janky because the friction is not right or something. Oh! But it technically works. Now, if we change the depth to like two, we're gonna make the wheel wider. Well, as you can see right now, um, the model is actually not lining up with the hitbox correctly, but our wheel is now two blocks wide instead of just one, which might actually be better. Like, to be honest, this model looks like something that would work better as a wheel instead of the scrap wheels, because the scrap wheels are just garbage. And yeah, this drives better than scrap wheels. I really have to say that. <laughs> we can also add a flammable property to our thing, which currently does nothing, because they still need to add fire physics. Now, a new thing
thing with uh, parts is a hull. Now, if I add a hull, this also gives us a box collision. And I just realized if I delete this, we can actually add a margin to a cylinder. Well, I have no idea what the margin does, but according to this only, yeah, I think it maybe extends the width of the cylinder a bit or something. I have really no idea. Well, if some of you know what the margin actually does, please leave a comment and I'll probably pin it or something. So check out the comment section. Now, again, we can add the hull, which at first looks like a box collision, but we can add uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, I've never seen this stuff before. Oh my God, this is going to be fun. All right, let's see first if the basic hull works. The answer is no, it doesn't. All right, so I think block units has something to do with, like hull is going to create a custom collision for it. And I think depending on the file you use for the custom collision, block units probably makes it so that, you know, one block equals one unit or something. So if you're making your own collision objects, this is maybe something you want to look out for. Now, I don't understand at all what this does. Now, we can also add a point list, but I would not add a point list. Like essentially what the collision is going to be is you're going to put down a lot of points in three dimensional space and then you connect them to create some kind of shape. And <laughs> I'm really not an expert when it comes to this, but what I know is the call um, thing. This is basically a collision file we can add to the whole thing. It just so happens that in the objects folder is there's also collision folder. So we could give this thing the collision of a cookpot just like this. And yeah, I think this is gonna work. Yeah, it's working. This is not um, really helpful with the cookpot, but this is gonna be really useful if you have something like a giant pipe because you can see this is not a box and it's not a cylinder collision. It's like some kind of slope that goes down. So if I were to link up the uh, file of this giant pipe piece to our custom tote bot, uh, tape bot head. Why do I keep confusing these? You know, we can have this kind of different collision. So you see this object underscore warehouse underscore big ramp dot object file. This is now going to give it some kind of ramp collision, which is probably a lot easier to show. Okay, I think I need to actually make the box a bit bigger so you can see it more uh, clearly. So I'm just going to turn it into a three by three cube. So yeah, now we can really see the ramp collision working because they can, you know, walk across the thing, which I mean, this makes a lot more sense if you actually have a model that is also shaped like a ramp. I'm just going to be sticking to a simple box for now. Can we have a name property, which is uh, pretty straightforward. Basically, this does nothing, but it gives you a name if you did not um, specify the inventory item descriptions. If you want to know how to do this, watch my last tutorial. That's where I showed you how you can like make descriptions. And now we also have similar uh, settings from last time we had with the blocks. So we have the ratings where we can adjust buoyancy and so on. Restitution, our good old restrictions, but I'm just gonna um, minimize these tabs for now. It's also show an inventory property, but yeah, we definitely want to see the part while we're working on it. Now, there's also a slant option. And so again, I can get rid of my box. What the slant is gonna add, I can show you. I should probably make it a bit bigger though. And um, this is gonna be a new collision for our object. Yeah, you might be saying, hey, I'm still using the hull collision with the warehouse ramp. And you're wrong because I did not forget to save the file. Uh, the thing that the slant, um, collision actually does is it creates a ramp. So provided you had a bunch of models for different sized ramps, which I'm not going to show you how to do it because that would be far too complex. <laughs> AKA I have no clue how to make it myself. Uh, you can easily generate the collision for your objects just with the slam property. Right. And lastly, there's again sphere collision. And this is now basically going to turn our beloved tape bot head into a ball. Now it's probably really, um, yeah. Why did I even add the properties? Now it's super destructible. Okay. I'm going to have to just the ratings. There we go. Now this is not going to move, but if I now punch it, you're going to see it uh, moves kind of like a ball. But you know, at least this is going to have some ball collision. And actually there was a workshop mod that just added wheels, but it changed the collision from a cylinder to a sphere. And I thought that's smooth or something. So let's just see if this, um, oh yeah, I don't need to replace the parts. I just literally changed the uh, collision and stuff. Let's see if um, balls are better for this. Oh my God, look how smooth this is. It was uh, way more um, weird with the <laughs> A cylinder collision before so I don't know maybe balls are better wheels I don't know I'm no physics expert but you can just join the renderable of the wheel I'm um, in the game files and change the collision yourself if you want to do it okay there's also the stack size property which um, again in creative is not that important but you know it controls how many of our parts we can um, fit into a slot on a chest or an inventory that is not like unlimited and yeah by default it is one 
so you can't stack it, but this is how you could change it. But I probably should not have stuck to the alphabetical order because sticky is a very, very important property. So yeah, let's add this. Currently, this is sticky all. This means we can attach blocks on all sides of our model. But maybe if a model like this toilet seat where you don't actually want people to um, attach blocks to the side or so. Because, you know, um, in the case of the toilet, they actually create a loose toilet over here. You see, we can only attach blocks to the back of it. And this is because the sticky is probably minus Y or something. So it's only selecting one side of the entire object. And for our um, head, it currently is set to all. So we can attach blocks on all sides, which ends up looking kind of weird, honestly. Like this is floating. We don't really want that. So I think here should be a drop down menu where I can just easily select which kind of stickiness I want to have. But um, there isn't. I mean, I didn't test this before. So I hope the devs are going to add some um, easy options here. Well, if we're having a look at the files for parts and stuff. You see that the stickiness are just the axes and a minus or plus sign. But you see sometimes it's just minus Y and this is now a small chest. So you can all, you know, it's only sticky on one side. This is like a minus Z. So yeah, you just add a letter of an axis with plus or um, minus. If it's at the top of the axis or at the bottom. I mean, let's just do like minus Y as an example. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick haha -ha, to the cylinder collision for once. Because I think that actually looks best. But yeah, I, um, I probably screwed up something with the collision. Because this is not the cylinder that I want. It's the wrong axis. But... Yeah, you can see um, I can place blocks on this side just fine. Um, I cannot place blocks on this side. I can't place them on this side or here or there. So yeah, you can only place them on the negative Y axis now, which uh, is apparently this part. I think I want this on the X axis and then I probably want it to be sticky on like both X axes. So I'm gonna do minus X and plus X and that should hopefully work. Here yeah, the collision makes sense and yeah I can place uh, stuff on this side of the wheel and probably also the other one. Yeah as you can see I can place uh, blocks on the other side as well but I can't actually place them on uh, the wheel for example. So this should actually be exactly the same stickiness the wheel has. Yeah I cannot place blocks on the wheel but at the side of the wheel. So yeah, that's how you do this kind of stuff. And yeah, now it's time to get to the fun stuff. Probably noticed that I skipped uh, quite a few of options in here. Well, this is because there's some interactive parts we can just do by um, adding a simple property to stuff. You know, like this electric engine or gas engine property. So there are some parts in the game like logic gates, the radio and so on that are implemented on like a much deeper level in the game that we do not have access to. So we can't, for example, actually access the script that controls a logic gate. Same also goes for like toadbot heads we, we do not have access to the script and just the same as for bearings so this is why we can't actually make our own custom bearings because it's not done on a level of stuff we have access to but there are other parts in the game like vacuum pumps or seats um which actually have scripts link we can modify and stuff and this is why you see mods are uh, messing around with some parts a lot more than other parts now all of this talk is going to get a lot more interesting if we want to make our own scripts but since there's some stuff implemented basically without scripts we need to modify we can add turn simple parts into our like logic gates and stuff so yeah we'd, i'll just show you how it works we can just add a simple camera property which is now gonna give this a camera script now apparently there's also some kind of drop down menu for this but um the only point at which the developers use this camera thing is in challenge mode so there's only the map inspector effect here and um, let's just save this and you'll be able to see what i mean well now at first you won't notice anything but if i place down a new part like this we can suddenly interact with this so this got now a camera script linked to it with the um, parameters the module gave it by default and as far as I know you can't link other stuff to it I don't know I never mess with this a lot but this is the same camera preview you also get in challenge mode so yeah, if you ever just wanted to add a part that does exactly that in creative mode you can just simply add this camera property now now since he's adding um, scripted things to our part we can only have one of them at once which else it's gonna get really confusing I wouldn't even try adding multiple of these next we can turn this into a chest and we can control the number of slots our chest is gonna have let's put that to like 69 like, okay look this is really interesting the part that i placed down before with the camera property still has the camera property saved but if i place down a new part now this is gonna be a chest that we can turn it uh, put items into and oh you actually see our part is not showing up as a part anymore it's now an interactive so it's gonna be chilling with the orange stuff over here and yeah i changed the text size to 69 because haha but yeah this is not gonna have any pipe inputs and stuff it's just like a space 
basic chest. Now we can also turn this really easily into an electric engine. And I know a lot of people would love a mod like this. What you currently see here, this is the effect it plays. Electric engine level one. And again, the drop down menu doesn't work. But I mean, you can guess if I just rename this to electric engine level five, this is gonna play the level five effects. Under here, we have a gears property. So let's add um, a couple of gears to our engine. Uh, I think three is all right. And let's start with like, I don't know, 10 velocity, 50 velocity and 100 velocity. Save it and like you're really just modifying engines at this point. But you know, a gas engine has a fixed speed and adjustable power. Currently all I was changing was the velocity. So we have fixed power but adjustable speed. And yeah, that's actually the description of the electric engine. So I think the only difference between the electric engine and the gas engine if you add them is that the gas engine is of course gonna consume gas so you can connect the gas container to it and the electric engine is gonna consume M batteries. But uh, let's actually, yeah, this is still gonna be a test. This is so odd. But yeah, I think it saves what kind of script it is on the part itself. So yeah, let's place down another one. This is now um, gonna be an electric engine. You can see the icon is, actually this is gonna work. Uh, let me show you. All we need to do to create items is uh, click share up here. Then we can click under icons up here and just press create icons. Now this random at this beautifully red um, head. Now we either change our resolution to uh, another level like this, which is gonna force the game to re-render all fonts, um, icons and stuff like that, or you just restart the game. And you'll actually see the icon shows up here. Cause yeah, I know how the electric engine script works. It just gets the icon of your current part. So yeah, we now have like a custom engine with only three settings, as you can see. So yeah, we can add as many settings to this as we want. Like you can actually have bars with a hundred options. It's really funny. Um, let's add this giant uh, pie piece to the barrel connect the bearing to our new engine and you can see it starts spinning and this is yeah it just behaves like an electric engine um just said look it currently spins even though i turned the engine off this is gonna be because at setting zero i still have the velocity at 10 so i'm not actually turning off the engine i'm just lowering the velocity to 10 but i think now i have a really great idea to show you some actual use of uh, this simple kind of modding it's gonna add a part a lot of you people really want yeah first i want a different renderable interactive upgradable this is gonna have all the parts you can upgrade. Now I'm gonna be looking for a gas engine level 5. Actually let's, let's do a gas engine level 3. Then we of course want a box collision. Yeah I don't know exactly what the stickiness is. Now you can just play around with random values to try and figure it out. Or if you're really smart you just open the database JSON file and you can just copy some stuff from here. I'll get you with this more advanced stuff later. Now I just copied the rotation set, stickiness, all of that stuff from the gas engine. Then I'm gonna add the gas engine property like this which as you can see is gonna look pretty much exactly the same as the electric engine just that in this case we want to change the power not the velocity uh, let's keep the effect at level three now instead of guessing these values yeah i'm now duplicating a lot of these items well it turns out this is actually a slider you can just simply drag stuff around on that's nice uh, yeah, I adjusted some power settings. It's not actually the same as it is in the script, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. Well, you see my goal with this was basically to create a level 5 engine, but with a level 3 sound effect. Because I know a lot of people, they don't like that the level 5 engine has such a weird sound effect, and you could kind of change it pretty easily like this. Oh, we actually cannot connect gasoline to the thing. Oh, I think this is because this is using the old creative implementation of a gas engine. I don't actually know. Anyway, let's delete the gas engine I worked on for so long. Now we can also give it a point light. Well, I tried making this point light thing work. Uh, I got a bug that I don't really understand how this works. Um, if anyone does, please comment below. Right, there's also a scripted component, but basically you can use this to link up your own scripts. Well, I mean any of the existing scripts in the game, but this is gonna be a later tutorial. Cause yeah, this is a little bit more advanced. So we'll just stick to the simple stuff, um, such as the sensor. Now we can add an on effect and an off effect. And again, I think, yeah, you can probably choose any effect in the game. Uh, like, there's a whole effects folder with a database and so on. This is where you can find the names. And just keep this at the default values for now. And if I now place down another engine, my game doesn't crash anymore. Which makes me really, really happy. But yeah, if I now interact with this, um, we have this weird sensor with the wrong icon. Because I didn't update the icon. Yeah, uh, let's turn on the sound and increase the range. Oh, this is really interesting. You know, when I activate the engine, what happens is you see the thing 
actually moves the handle. This is actually a really weird coincidence. You know, there's items like the Switch and they have two different pose animations, like one with the button pressed and one with the button not pressed. And the sensor has like some animation like that too, apparently. And since the gas engine has two models as well, it's gonna trigger the models of the... Like if you put the script on a Switch, the Switch is gonna be pressed if you get close to it. Like, yeah, but this is basically a sensor now. I just have no idea how to control which direction it aims at. But yeah, there's no property for this to actually control this. So, yep, let's have a look at the seat. I somehow uh, skipped this. Now, this is gonna be really fun because now we will be able to add our custom seats to this game. Oh, I have a really epic idea. Okay, let me try if I can make this work. Okay, there's char underscore cow dot rent. Okay, now we actually have a walk we can place down. And we apparently link to rectal file. Okay, let's first try this. Now we have a uh, walks everywhere. <laughs> okay, this looks kind of cursed. The collision, as you, as you can see, of the walk is not perfect. But so if, if I press F on it, it's... Oh my god, this is so cursed. Yeah, I think the rotation of the seat is exactly not where the exact rotation is the walk. So yeah, we need to place the walk like upside down. And if I now... Oh, um, this is odd. Look what happens. Our mechanic character just disappears for some really, really reason. Okay, uh, oh my god, what is just happening? Our mechanic character just seems to keep falling. Look at this. When I enter the seat, we just keep falling for some reason. And yeah, I think I know why. It's because of bones. This is controlling where uh, the bones of our mechanics are gonna end up. And as you can see, this is pretty much just empty. So this is kind of dumb. Anyway, let's link the rectal file of the cow and see if this changes stuff. Oh yeah, that was the sensor. I, it's just all cows. Oh yeah, it works. Um, okay, this this looks really dumb. I, I really regret having done this. Why did I even change the model to a walk? This is dumb. But yeah, now we've got a seat and, and we'll just stand inside a walk, which, oh my, oh my god, this is so cursed. Yeah, I do not mess with the rectal file. Oh, you see, this is actually um, a bat and the bat also has some uh, bone properties. I'm just gonna yoink off this. You know, I was saying I'm gonna do this later, but I just really want to have a walk I can lie down on or something. So yeah, you see for some stuff you actually do need to modify the files after all. But yeah, I mean you could have also used the interface of the module to add all of these bones manually, but I mean copy pasting is just easier if you know how to. So let's see if we can actually, this is gonna look really bad. I think I'm actually gonna regret having done this. Okay, let's see, let's see. Oh my, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> you can currently see the only thing that's sticking to the model is my arms. The rest is not sticking to it. Not at all. I didn't even know you could do this. This is so funny. Yeah, I'm just hanging off the walk or something and I'm flipping. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> you see, modding can be a lot of fun. Is this what you expected to see when you clicked on this video? I'm not entirely sure how this works. I just thought this was a mistake. Yeah, let, let's get rid of this cursed seat. Okay, now I'm gonna add a steering component, which... Okay, this is just a seat, but it's gonna allow us to um, steer bearings and stuff with it. So you see, I can connect this cursed uh, walk not to an engine, but I can connect it to a switch. Now that I changed the script to steering, I can also control an engine like this. And there's also a steer angle thing, which is gonna control a steer angle. Yeah, I know I'm really smart. There's also a thruster, which is actually really cool. So of course we can also set the thruster effect to like any effect in the game. And you know, we have average force and force variation. So if I turn like force variation down, and just um, have some average force, we can create a thruster that's not gonna have any variation and it's gonna be like perfect and the thrust it provides. And yeah, it's gonna look like a walk. Like, why does this look like her scrap mechanic now? This is a walk, if I turn on the switch, we have flying walks now. Why am I doing this? This is so dumb. This is just like modding in a nutshell. Look at what I've done. Look at this world. It is pure... There's flying walks. Yeah, that's fun. Now let's add the tone property, which yeah, is not a lot of fun since um, I can only have a retro bass, a retro bass, or um, a retro bass. I, I literally do not have any more options. But yeah, I hope they're really gonna improve these drops 
drop down menus at some point because you see something tries to open up but I think it's just an empty window yeah this is gonna allow us to make like musical walks I think okay so we have like a half broken toad bot but yeah it's working and we can make music with it yeah I think there's also names for the other toad bot hats so that probably controls the UI you can have but why are there three options I don't get it but yeah if I now I flick the switch we can make music with a walk which is not nearly as cursed as the other stuff <laughs> yeah there's also a simple interactive you can add and it is anything but it's simple there's just animation time and sustained audio like it's all I can do here like I have no idea how this even works wait why is this doing like horn sounds now yeah I can connect something to the walk and nothing happens yeah I don't get this simple interactive but yeah this is how you add pass to scrap mechanic and even gives them some very very cursed interactive functions and next episode we're gonna have a look at more advanced scripting which will allow us to add our own pistons or controllers suspension and even probably our very first scripted parts. So yeah, since this is officially a series now, there's gonna be a playlist on the end screen. Watching all of these videos is gonna save you a lot of frustration later. And leave a sub if you think this was helpful and not totally cursed and destroyed your childhood.